so excited, dude. Yay. Thank you. Put dope ass music. Basically. <laughs> Para karne na sarili ko Sa si paminta ay ibabat Laga na madik sarap Ulang pasarapin At impla rin bago masakawali ko Ilipat Tal sikman tiga ingat Ihanda ang taki You know, Idle Hands or the Devil's Workshop. My best friend's mom taught me that when I was a kid, but it's remained in my mind ever since. I always try and find things to do, ways to stay productive. So one of my good friends who has a restaurant here, I was giving him some products. I helped photograph my friend's restaurant, as you saw in the previous episode, Mosu. He's my Hyung. If you don't know, Hyung means like older brother, like Mandarin Daga. I want to help him out to show my appreciation and gratitude for him always like taking care of me and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you guys like a traditional Korean lunch, which is very different than a Filipino one. I was, you know, speaking to a friend about food. For Koreans, a typical lunch is soup. I can like name a bunch of different soups. Soup kejang, kalbuksu, solongtang, sundubu jjigae. Some things that you may be familiar with in the Philippines. You know, I wanted to show you guys, I guess, a traditional Korean lunch so that you can see the kind of contrast in how they eat. Because our cultures are different, our food and the way we eat are different too. So I live in Hongdae, which is like near Nara College. A lot of the food that you'll find in this I think in college cities in general are like oriented towards college students, making them like affordable. Whereas a classic Filipino breakfast or lunch, aka salog, is rice, egg, and some protein, a Korean one is rice with a variety of side dishes, aka banchan. So you'll find stuff like kimchi, bean sprouts, radish, seaweed soup, and more. I ordered kalguksu, which is knife cut wheat noodles, super thick, in a seafood broth but this one had some shredded chicken in it. Since this place is behind my Airbnb, I've come here before for bosam, which is boiled pork belly and spices and served with some side sauce. One thing that I noticed when I first came to Korea is that like a lot of these restaurants and businesses are actually like still open. My friend who I photographed for, his name is Sung, um, basically we were chatting and he was telling me that like a lot of the restaurants in Korea really can't afford to close. I know in Manila right now it's only essential businesses that are operating in Korea because most shops are like mom and pop shops. Like this one that I ate at right now is a mom and pop shop for like college students in this particular case. A lot of them need to survive, they need to keep operating. It's totally different than what's going on in Manila where these mom and pop shops are actually closing and it's very bad for business. So if I remember this correctly, when you were talking, me and, me and Sung, apparently some businesses do close, but for the most part, there is government aid to help these restaurants, mom and pop restaurants, like stay afloat. But I think of course it is bracketed based off like income, <clears throat> is what is what he said. And also like if you do, if you are like in the unfortunate circumstance where you do have to close, then I think you do get payment for sure just to like make sure you're staying afloat and i know this is the case for japan i think it's a very interesting difference the ramifications of this are gonna be very interesting other than restaurants though small cafes are open too both are just cutting staff to keep them financially afloat and it's not just seoul where shops are open i visited one of my buddies in ilsan which is one hour give or take west of seoul and he took me and a friend to a local restaurant that was still operating despite this whole corona situation they specialized in dishes using acorn or totori in Korean, which you probably wouldn't find in Seoul. Acorn noodles? Yeah. You also lit, dude. Put dope ass music. Basically. <laughs> So I think the differences in how South Korea is handling the whole situation with small businesses is because of a difference in how the government is handling the whole corona situation and in like economics and other factors as well. Because South Korea kind of acted very quickly and enforced like very strict sanitation and more active policies, they were able to kind of curb it. I think another thing to consider is that South Korea is a pretty small country and so one thing that my friend Sung was telling me was they have like this whole community mentality in mind just because they know that it's not about the individual restaurant but more about the community as a whole and how the community is going to survive through the whole ordeal. It really differs compared to how the Philippines is dealing with this problem because in the Philippines on the other hand we're enacting a full lockdown meaning there's no mobile activity for people to walk around or even go out to eat. Maybe if these restrictions were lighter or if there was like more thorough testing, then there'd be more foot traffic for these small mom and pop restaurants to survive. You know, on, on the one hand, I understand that the Philippines doesn't necessarily have, you know, the same resources as South Korea, but there are consequences, ramifications for these small businesses, especially if they're not going to get any, you know, government help 
to keep them afloat. And you know, it's not just restaurants as well, but it's any small business because everyone's getting affected too. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just been it. Episode two, guys. Tune in for more. Maybe I'll get more yats. Who knows? I'm here for a minute. Peace out. Enjoy. Stay safe, stay quarantined. Sa asin paminta ay ibabat Lagana magic sarap Ulang pang sarapin At implain bago mas